welcome to a brand new series of Hope Devotionals on the book of Genesis, the first book of the Bible. My name is Joy and I'm a part of our Bromley North congregation and I have the privilege to give you a brief overview of this book and launch our series. So the book of Genesis, Genesis is the Greek word meaning origins and that is pretty much what the book focuses on, the origins of the world and of the family of Abraham. So it's family history and world history. And to quote Fillmore, God inspired history of the world. And the author is most likely Moses and his original audience would have been the Israelites in the wilderness. So Israel had just come out of slavery in Egypt and they were in the process of becoming an independent nation and this book would have been really crucial for them to understand uh, the origins of the world, um, to understand why God created the world and what their role uh, was. And it's the history of their family, the family of Abraham. And we, if we are followers of Jesus, are actually a part of that family as well. Paul tells us this in Galatians 3, 7. He says, Know then that it is those of faith who are the sons of Abraham. So if you're a follower of Jesus, this is your family history as well. You have been adopted in. So there are a lot of narratives in this book, and it can be pretty neatly split into two sections. You've got Genesis 1 through 11, and then chapters 12 through 50. So 1 through 11 is God and the world. So you've got the creation of the world, the creation of humans, and human beings are made in the image of God. They are to rule on his behalf and represent him. But uh, he also gives them a choice. They can choose to trust him and his definitions of good and evil, or they can choose to uh, seize autonomy and define good and evil for themselves. And of course, we all know what happens um, with Adam and Eve and sin enters the world. And we see in Genesis 1 through 11, the consequences, the downward spiral that happens because of sin. So um, not uh, some happy stories in there, but we also see a promise, a promise that God gives to Eve that promise that one of her children will one day deal with evil, will crush the head of the snake. And this is fulfilled in Jesus. So right from the very beginning, we have uh, Jesus. So there is the divine promise and the divine blessing. And this gets traced down throughout the book of Genesis. So Genesis chapter 12 through 50, the rest of the book, pretty much uh, zeroes in on one family, which is Abraham, and then his descendants. So you will find a lot of genealogies in the book of Genesis, but don't be afraid of them. Uh, don't just skip over them because you think they're boring. They are very important. They link different narratives together, and they also um, help us to trace the promise of God, the divine blessing. And God promises Abraham that he is going to bless Abraham. He will become a father of many nations. And the purpose of blessing Abraham is so that he will then become a blessing to all the nations. So God very much has the whole world on his heart. But he's going to use one family to bring about his purposes. So this is what we have to look forward to. We get to see God and his people, the story of God and his people. We see how even when God's chosen people act just like any other person and sin and fall short, God is still committed and faithful and is going to keep his promises and his purposes. So Let's dive in. Jonathan Reeves is going to kick us off tomorrow with uh, chapter one of Genesis. So I look forward to seeing what God has to say to us as a church and through each individual person as they share with you. So I hope you are encouraged and blessed and we will see you later.
Bye.